Well, time is not linear, so. Time is not linear. Time is not linear. <laughs> everyone welcome to into the wormhole with larissa and lauren had to think about that but <laughs> always gets top billing uh we are here today for i guess this is our holiday episode kind of yes we have a very special guest with us and i'm going to let larissa introduce and we hope you enjoy this very this very merry <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Aki. This is this is what you're in store for. A very merry. We hope you have a very merry. A very That's merry. It. I was trying to think. Well, my husband's Jewish, and I was trying to think of like a, a more like Jewish uh, adjective to be um, inclusive. But like, all I can really think about is Happy Hanukkah. There's yeah. not really a lot of like Hanukkah y mm. adjectives. You totally. Right. It, right. You malfunctioned. Like you looked like you I froze. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. Zoom froze. Yeah. It was great. You, yeah. You thought the Zoom video had just frozen, and you guys can hear me, but it was really mm. just my brain. So it was internal. Yeah. This is going great, by the way. <laughs> um, so far, so good. <laughs> so, Larissa, yeah, we, we have this special episode because of you. Uh, do you wanna you wanna introduce uh, our special guest? I would love to. So, our special guest for this special holiday episode is Aki Burmese. Yay! Woo! Hi. Woo it's good to be here. <laughs> Hello. I'm so excited to have you on our very silly podcast. Uh, Aki is an incredible musician, keyboard player, songwriter, singer. He's currently playing with the band Lake Street Dive and just being awesome. I met Aki because I have been playing with an artist named Allison Russell. Woo! And woo! Who says hi, by the way? Oh, hi. Uh, um, back. Yeah, aw. Yeah. Hi, back, Allie. <laughs> Allie's great. Um, and we were on tour opening a few shows for Lake Street Dive over the summer and the fall. And toward the end of the run, I heard from a little birdie that Aki was a Trekkie and that he also had a Star Trek podcast. What? In fact, I had just come from recording that podcast. Oh, God. It was great. Uh, and I think you were listening to your podcast. I was because like I was editing yeah. it so that we could. Yeah. yeah and I was trying to figure out if I did it right. Crazy times. Oh my God. Yeah. It was it was a beautiful moment. I think I, I was not sure if I scared you or not because I was like, I heard something about no. you and you were like, what? Well, I was a little, because the people had told you, I was like, what did you hear? And they were like, oh, we told her. And I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> what? I, did I, I don't re recall whatever everyone was freaked out about. And then it was like, you have a Star Trek podcast. And I was like, well, oh, yeah, of yes, course. Yes, I do. Certainly do. Uh, that was yeah. excellent. And then you caught me singing Faith of the Heart at Soundcheck. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, but you were singing it with such gusto. <laughs> it was truly, you hadn't been doing that before, had you? I occasionally would, just Ugh. just because, and no, because nobody yeah. in my band knows that song. Yeah. So I, well, I wouldn't, you know, end up throwing someone into a fit of disgust by singing it. Right, they would just be right. like, what's that? Mm -hmm. That sounds funny. I found it interesting how, like, anthemic it was without with just a voice certainly it felt very much like a i should have stopped and like saluted a federation flag or something yeah they uh, just did it wrong it was great <laughs> yeah yeah it should have just been just acapella <laughs> well and honestly i i feel like does he know that uh diane warren actually yep. commented on it and approved of your performance really? oh yeah i posted, I posted a cover of yeah. just me playing piano and scream singing it into the void and she was like yay my star trek song like she that's beautiful. she also misspelled star trek it was adorable because she does her all her own social media obviously yeah and it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean excellent that's i appreciate that i appreciate a misspelling that is indicative of yes i'm the one behind this <laughs> yes. yeah <laughs> and yes i have no idea really what star trek is 
Right. And it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, they were like, we need a hit song. We usually go orchestral, but now we're thinking we'd go for something poppy. Yeah. That's really going to define this new millennium of humanity. And she was like, all right, uh, tell me what it's about. Yep. Uh, hearts? Yeah, faith. cool. I've got something like that already that I wrote for Patch Adams. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just use that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wings. I, I think I have exactly what you need. <laughs> Certainly. Got, oh, Diane Warren. She's like, and I have so much money that I don't care if people hate this yeah. song. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. You can hate it. You eventually you will love it. The song <laughs> As I will, do. It will win you over. Exactly. <laughs> Laura, Lauren, Lauren, I don't know like, about that one. Yeah. <laughs> it, I just feel like you need to give it a little more time. A I, little more time. I I appreciate my hate of it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's sometimes that's as far as you get. Hate's but that's too strong of a word. A beautiful. I, don't know. I think we all. Uh, I remember watching Enterprise and being like, this is awful every time. And then during my rewatch of Enterprise later, when I was like, maybe the show is good and the song is bad. I was like, the show is has some good moments. And then I was like, you know what? I'm starting to like this song a little bit. Did you like it when they made it more upbeat? And no, made- that was a terrible choice. It was right, so bad. Right. That was that was that was another step in the wrong direction. <laughs> you I mean, adding more guitars to something. <laughs> when those guitars are just like acoustic guitars just doing this mm-hmm. I f- jingling and jangling it's never really a good idea it seems like something a corporation would have come up with yep. They're like we need something more Snappy. I don't know people love guitars right yep. put more guitars yep. on it you're like cool thanks for your focus group idea that mm-hmm. makes no mm-hmm. sense the- and now yeah, they're like, you're going to require us a to a guitar do it. Yeah. multiple Many. more guitars could you put four yeah. or maybe five Five guitars. Four or five guitars, <laughs> at least. And let's just see how that tests. Oh, my God. So stupid. You know? It was such a bad idea. <laughs> I, no. I can't get over it. No, no. Like it's okay, so, so much fun. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have some questions. Because this yeah. is a perfect example of what our podcast is, Aki. And I'm really curious to know more about your podcast and, and what's called. I don't even think I know officially the name. Um, but it, oh, because it sounds name. like you guys are much more, it sounds stressful and it sounds like something Larissa and I could not do because we're not focused enough to be quite honest. No, no, it's, we would not No, We, you know what? We have tried to do yeah. little, like re, we'll watch like some episodes of a new series and we'll do a recap and mm-hmm. we'll talk about how we feel. And it always turns into like a three hour conversation that I end up editing for like six hours. <laughs> Because because right, there's right. no way because we can't just, we'd start we'll start a recap and then the recap will mm-hmm. turn into something else. Yeah. Oh no, I've I've listened to your episodes <laughs> and I and I delight in them because that's how you should talk about track. I think the most organic way is to be like, let's just talk about uh, this one episode of track where Garrick does this one thing yeah. with Julian, and then. Yeah. Four hours later, you're talking about like uh, you know Quark's antics, you know, uh, back on the Ferengi homework. Yeah. Because you everything is connected to everything, and that's how you kind of want to talk about episodes. So, but in our show, uh, my like co-host Stevie, she really wanted it to be like an after show, yeah, kind of thing. So each thing is like it's dealing with one show. We run it. We literally came up with a section called "Run It Down." I love it. I love the and, theme music for that section yeah. so much. Great job. Thank you. We Yes, we, well, all of this was pandemic born. So it was like, all I have was a keyboard and a microphone, which <laughs> who needs That's all else. you need. And uh, yeah. So uh, basically we, we are both like Stevie and I are both musicians and we just love Star Trek and we love talking about it. But when we would talk about it, we would talk about it the way you're describing six hours of, you know, many references across multiple franchises. So we decided we'll say hello. We'll do a section called Run It Down, and I will take copious notes of every episode. Oh, you're the note taker. Oh, yeah, I'm the note taker. I'm the note taker. I do all the notes, and Stevie has to do all the editing. So, Mm. uh, you know, it's it's definitely a checks and balances kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, And, yeah, and then I try to run down the show as succinctly as possible, which with these new tracks is not super easy. Oh, my God. Because usually, like, four plot lines that are all like emotionally draining. Uh, and then the, you know, I'm really trying to get this, the size, I'm trying to get that down to like a 10 minute recap. 
Um, God, that's a job. But it's it's not going well. A- I'm well over. It's always 15 to 20 minutes. And then and then we have like a discussion about the episode where also I have taken notes about like what topics about the episode we want to discuss. And and then we do some quotable moments. Yeah. So that's how we keep our but you know, full disclosure, when we record, it's like 20 minutes of talking up front before Always. we hit record Always. about it. We do our show, and then we talk for like another 35 minutes. Yeah. You know, after the show's done. And that's still not enough. Yep. Um, so anyway, yes. And I, have I said the show? You name? have not. I've, no, I've no. been waiting this whole time to be like, and the sh- and your show is called. Stevie, I'm so I- sorry. Uh, <laughs> the show is called Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yes. Go listen to that podcast. Woo! If you're li- if you're watching new Star Trek, if you're not watching new Star Trek yet, don't listen to no, it yet. Because I watch the new Star Trek. It literally spoils everything. I am beat by beat telling you who dies, yep. who done it, why they done it. Yep. What what timeline they done it in. So yeah. <laughs> who cried? Who didn't cry? Oh yeah. Who we cried love more than one crying. time? Yeah, so many tears. So uh, much crying. Mm-hmm. I love the I love, crying. I love it though. I do. I like it. Yeah. I mean, you Laura don't... knows. I like good friend moments, so I like. I I know. I know. Larissa usually gets distracted by good friend mm. moments, and I usually end up talking about Star Trek hair. Um, so oh that's what goodness. happens to us. Well, so I hope you enjoy our Lucy. I do, uh, and I'm so glad style. to be here because the <laughs> uh, the episodes slash episodes we're talking about talk about friendship moments. It's like all these like heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Weepy. I like was wet eyed from like moment one. Uh, oh God! Watching uh, what you leave behind. I mean, even the title is like, "Get ready to say goodbye." I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's so depressing and so sweet. And, oh God. Yeah. So we I don't think we've actually said what we're going to talk. <clears throat> no, about we haven't. Great. <laughs> well, it's a holiday episode, so of course. I mean, of course, we're talking about the emissary. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the emissary. It's uh, yeah. This is Bajoran Christmas. He's Bajoran. He's like Bajoran baby Jesus. Uh, he really is. But he's a grown man. He really man. is. <laughs> but he's a full adult human. <laughs> but he's still a baby. Mm-hmm. A little baby. He's just a little baby. To to the well, time is not linear. Yeah, time so, is not linear. You know that's what we. Learned. Well, you know, he's both and, adult and baby. In point of fact, if we want to get into whatever you call that thing, uh, where it, all the myths are all the myths, mega myths, big big old myths. Monomyth? Monomyth. If you want to get... Thank you. I like Lauren. mega myth, though. You're killing that just it, though. sounds no. like yeah, a Transformer or something. Mega myth. Where... <laughs> yeah. I will read you a story. Uh, <laughs> monomyth, we get this whole season. I tried to watch the whole season, but it turned out to be too much uh, to mm. try and watch 26 hours of Star Trek for this podcast. But I watched a lot. <laughs> no. That it begins with him searching for his mother and his mother. Yes. Cisco's mother is like one of the... The fa- not the founders. <laughs> There's so many the wormhole thugs. aliens, the, wormhole, the prophets, the prophets, the prophets, prophets, the founders, the power rates. There's all these the the does in this thing. <laughs> is one of the prophets, and so he has like this sort of like we find out that Cisco has this uh, immaculate conception kind of thing too. So yeah. there is a bit of a, a Christmas story tied up in this season. Yes, I specifically have. Like the memory alpha for image in the sand pulled up because I was like, we need, we're gonna need to talk yes, about this. Yes, yeah, we're gonna need to talk about. I mean, what the f- what the fuck this is? Mm-hmm. How like the the entire series, Cisco is just the the idea of being the emissary is his difficulty with like reconciling his his Starfleet responsibilities and his then responsibilities to the Bajoran people through their religion. Right. And that's very fascinating already. That's really interesting. And then they fucking go and be like, actually, you're a uh, part wormhole alien. Too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're ju- we would just love to complicate this situation yeah. even more. They're like a prophet came out of the wormhole, went to visit your dad. And... In New Orleans? Yeah. Because that's the place you go and, uh, if you're Bajoran. made sweets we love. And gave birth to you, and then she bounced. Yep. And then she bounced. She had to go back from to, your mother's yeah. body. Well, yeah. You know, in point so of fact, so sad. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here, but when you, there is no such thing as jumping ahead right. because yeah. time is not linear. Okay. We do it all the time. Oh, oh we're in the celestial temple. Um, <laughs> I guess you guys. It's called into the wormhole, so we're there. Yeah. And um, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, time is not mm-hmm. linear. It's not. <laughs> when you first mentioned, were we even talking about doing an episode or were we just talking about Trek on tour? But you were talking about having watched this last episode and you were like, I can't believe that Cisco leaves Jake. He only goes to talk to uh, not to Sarah. Cassidy. Cassidy. Oh, my God. Oh, gonna, yeah. The names are going to be terrible S- right now. There's a lot of names. It's okay. S- Sarah is the mother. Cassidy is the new wife who's pregnant. Yes. Uh, yes. He only goes to talk to Cassidy. But I was thinking as I was rewatching that 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 bookend of a parent leaving a child is like the seed is planted in that first episode of season seven because he's he's been searching for his mother yeah. all this time. Yeah, I actually yeah. Oh, see. This is one of those things where it's like I thought we'd talk about this later, but it's like we're I'm talking so about it now. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's how it goes. I, so it's more okay. like, yeah, we just shoot from the hip. Great. Um, no, we do. that's interesting because. Um, one of the things I always remember from years ago, kind of reading up on the end, was that um, Avery Brooks had a lot to say about the ending because mm. originally he was just supposed to like be gone. Right. And Avery Brooks came forward and said, I don't, you know, it's been such like a positive portrayal of Jake and his dad. And we don't see a lot of that representation, especially right. in the African-American um, community. So right. the fact that they were such like a strong father son connection and he really didn't want to just be you know be the flip end where it's like he's gonna leave jake he's gonna leave his pregnant wife right so Avery brooks had a lot to say in the writing room about like can we at least suggest that he will be back in some way in the future and it's Mm -hmm. not just he's gone right but looking back like part of me is like he should have talked to jake (laughs) yes it was i mean it's a tough call though it makes me upset because oh here's here's what i think Mm -hmm. why can he only talk to one person yeah i was like can't they both be there (laughs) that was my feeling why didn't he He only has one he only has one phone call right i'm willing to bet they must have (laughs) argued about that in the writer's room for hours because my feeling is yeah bring both jake and cassidy and say and have a moment with both of them Please, Jaco. You know I love you, and I don't know when uh, I'll be back. Blah, blah, blah. And then Cassidy. You know I love you, and I don't know when I'll be back. Yes. Then he can kiss her, and then they can both go back and be like, "We don't know." But like, yeah, yeah. Because then we Just, get this last shot of the end of the whole freaking show is Jake looking out the window at the stars, wondering when God his dad's gonna come back. It. It's heartbreaking. It is so fucking sad. It makes me so sad. <laughs> Well, and the wonderful, I think the wonderful thing is like a missed opportunity with the editing because you really could have him meeting with them individually, but it keep right. going between the two conversations between oh, him great. and Jake and him and Cassidy. Lauren. And I would have loved it if the scene with Jake at the end, this imaginary scene we're talking about, is on the dock where it starts off in the first episode. Remember, oh, they're sitting on the God. dock. Yes. Well, they had a little montage. It made me, yeah. That's right. They did show me. it then. But can yeah. you imagine, like, him? If he's back on the dock, grown saying, well, Jake, yeah. Gotta go fishing or whatever. Something great. <laughs> Just gets in a boat. <laughs> that would definitely, like, lock in the time is not linear thing. And, yes. like, he's like, oh, I came back at a different time. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god! Or even just to have that. that just be like a little fun setting. Like this yeah. was a special place yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, the prophets already. Oh, when they're talking to someone, they bring them into a spot. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, yeah. they just here's a spot that's in your mind. Sometimes and we're just it's gonna the hang void out of here. light, and sometimes it's a spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's just the bridge. Sometimes yeah. it's just the promenade. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, just a set they've got. I have been uh, so- soothing myself with the thought that maybe he gets a dream visit from his dad on his birthday every year or something like that. Like they, yeah, they hang out and they do go fishing. And he's like, how's yeah. life as the emissary? And his dad's like, I don't know. It's Time is not <laughs> linear. We are here yeah. and we have been here and we will be here, Jaco. You know? Oh, it's a yeah. lot of paperwork. It's, true. it's a lot of, <laughs> so much paperwork. I don't know. I think the other thing that makes me so sad about it is that this has already fucking happened mm-hmm. to Jake before. Yes. You guys remember the episode where he he gets like, I don't know, caught in some time thing and he's, it's the visitor, yeah. yeah, yeah, and like that's when uh, we get. Uh, oh, what's his what's his Candy name? Candyman actor, Candyman. Yeah, what's his uh, name? Um, yeah. He's also Kern. Exactly. Who's that? Uh, 
he that plays Tony older Todd? Jake. Is it Tony Todd? Oh, it oh. is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Tony Todd. Nice yeah, pull. check it out. Oh. But like he's like, I only saw my dad one time after that, or whatever. You know, he's yeah. like old and he's like old Jake. writing the story. Yeah, and he's like, I could never be happy because I was always waiting for my dad to come back. So we already had that shit pulled on Jake before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we saw how terrible it was. In a different timeline. But I think now new Jake is armed with the knowledge of that old. I feel like this is better. Maybe, yeah. Because at least Jake knows where his dad is, even if he is like, why, yes. why is my life like this? I'm it just saying, drag. how dare you do that to me and my emotions? I was thinking, but I was thinking, like, could he have? He couldn't have just spoken to Jake because Cassidy's pregnant with a new child. He has to speak to his, of his course, yes. wife because uh, she has to yes, raise a does. baby now, and he's yes. decided he's going to go away uh, for a year, couple years, couple months. Uh, who knows? Or he could come back yesterday. He could come. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I could be back yesterday, baby. Uh, <laughs> That's what they all say. Too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> might be gone for a week or a month or a couple years, or I might be back yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. So let's just kiss and I'm going to go. Oh, uh, God. He, uh, yes, I feel like the ideal thing would have been to have both of them have a moment, but I do feel like the writers of DS9 wanted some sort of sad conflict at the end. They gave us a lot of happiness. Yeah. But they, yeah. I mean, the episode is called What You Leave Behind. So they gave us a ton of also like very melancholy yeah. partings. And I think that was the biggest final one. Mm-hmm. Although True. I didn't fully weep until I, Julian and Miles had to separate. For some reason, that truly broke my heart. Again, it does every time. Oh my God, I know. Yeah. That, that's a very special friendship. See, again, friendship moments. Friendship moments. That's that's all my favorite shit. Friendship moments are my favorite shit. This is why I love Discovery so much. Yeah, yeah. They're all, yes. and everyone, everyone else is like, everyone's crying all the time. And yeah. I'm like, I love it. They're I friends. Yeah. They're friends. And now they're family. They're chosen family. Yeah, yeah. And they're holding hands. Yeah. I fucking love that shit. Well, what do you guys think of Julian and Garrick's goodbye? <sighs> oh, shit. That one really still is hard to accept because I've maybe I've read too much Shakespeare <laughs> but it seems like like Garrick is like on the verge of like just walking into the ocean or something he's just so <laughs> broken up about Cardassia and he's so yeah. hard so hard to read you know in the best of times but he's just sort of like he said what's the final thing Bashir's like I hope I see you again and he's like uh, as do I, but we live in uncertain times, Doctor. Oh my, my dear God. Doctor, or whatever. And he like walks out. Yep. And he's been kind of in a break since uh, uh, Mima me- me- died. <laughs> me- Mima. Yep. Not Mima. <laughs> Not Mima. Mila. 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 <laughs> Mila. <laughs> yeah. Which, which was confirmed behind the scenes that that's Garrick's mom. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I. That was the other thing oh, I remember yeah. being like, is that his mom's grandma? What's going on there? <laughs> but definitely that relationship, which is all we really need to know, that their relationship yeah. was, was yep. mother and child. And she dies definitely. right before this 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 revolution. And he I don't think he recovers. He definitely doesn't recover from that in the time that we see these characters. No. So no. It was it was heartbreaking because I, I also will miss their their little lunches together. Poor Garrick and all this. Sh- Garrick has a whole lot of shit Ooh. that happened to him. So much going on with Garrick. He's got so much trauma. I loved Garrick. Mm-hmm. I loved the character of Garrick. I think that was such a wild choice. Uh, you don't have that in too many other Star Treks. Discovery does have Giorgio from the Mirror Universe, but you rarely have like an antagonist that's part of the crew. You're right. Yeah. And yeah, he was you're such right. a great antagonist that also was a tailor. It just was so perfect for him. <laughs> yeah. Why is it always oh. a tailor? I don't know, but it worked out great. I just loved okay. that he was like, mm-hmm. oh, you'd come to his store and go, no, oh, I could get you a suit or a hat, you know, and it's all code mm-hmm. for like. Yep, or ins- some information. In- yeah, information <laughs> or insurgency or someone's name or yep. whatever. Uh, but then he, fi- you know, yeah. I feel like he's always so very guarded. And then in this final season, he's like, I'm going to go to, it's finally time for me to go back to Cardassia and help 
start this revolution and you know he loses his mother and damar dies and fucking damar pretty hard for him mm. to move on i don't know what he would do after that i, I was julian appreciate it. i'm sorry go on oh sorry i was gonna say i kind of appreciated how damar's death was in a way kind of very not dramatic i guess for the yeah. lack of a better word <laughs> it just sort yeah. of happens there's like he's mid sentence and he you know yeah uh, and it, there was something about it that seemed a little bit real, but I know Larissa is a big fan of Damar, and I was, fucking love that arc, man. I would, yeah, I was really yeah. curious, <laughs> even though even though Garrick never really like it, 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 they don't really talk that much about Ziel aftermath. Kira yeah. kind of a little bit, but yeah, it's sort of. Like, I mean that that detail gets a big old eye roll from me. <laughs> 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 okay. Cool, you killed your puppy. Awesome. Right, right. <laughs> so mad, so mad. I mean, I could we could do a whole episode on Zial, and I have talked I have talked at length about how I feel about how her character was treated. I even wrote a, f- a whole fucking piece for the Women at War blog about mixed race characters on Star Trek and mm. how they're all just tragic mulatto tropes. Yes, and how mad I am about that. Yeah, but yeah. I could go on, but that this is not the place for that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, I will stop. Well, I, you know, I will not. we're making space for it nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, we are talking about like the ending of DS9 mm-hmm. and like kind of focusing on the emissary because it's Christmas. So you have to you have to focus on the emissary. We got to focus on the emissary. Uh, we do. Yes. There's a lot of like beautiful ways that they tied up some of these characters, though. Mm-hmm. And I like that we're talking about. Yeah, how those things happened. Yeah, I hope um, that's okay because I thought we were just talking about the end of oh, Deep yeah. Space Nine. Oh yeah, no, and, we uh, it's all connected. Yeah, yeah, all connected. I'm glad that we t- we already talked about the Cisco doesn't talk to Jake at the end, which I th- will we'll probably touch back on that <laughs> intermittently because it is it's hard to let go of. It is. I mean, it's really hard. It's that is that is something that has been very hard for me personally to mm-hmm. let go of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we built this relationship this like beautiful relationship and then there and then he just get then he gets nothing he just (laughs) yeah it makes me really really sad that is the thing that makes me the most sad Mm. Mm. it's obviously supposed to be the most painful one yeah and it's it was obviously a purposeful choice by the writers to not have him talk to jake but I am still twenty years later. <laughs> still 20, very upset. It seems like twenty three years later, I am still really upset. Yeah, for Jake. I'm so upset for Jake. Jake has been through a. You know, Jake was on the station during the occupation. Jake is not. He's been through a lot. I was remembering this as I was watching that he stayed there when the Dominion took over D Space Nine mm-hmm. and everyone else left. Uh, because he was like a war reporter. Uh and Oh god. And that episode where he has to where he's with Bashir because he's yeah. writing a thing. Yeah, exactly. About him and then they go to, and then he's yeah. Yeah. At that uh makeshift hospital yeah. and mm-hmm. oh god. And not to mention I mean, we focus on Cisco's trauma, but Jake also lost his mother at Wolf 359. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when he was a baby. And then he lost his mirror universe mother. And he lost his mirror universe mother, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, well, okay, let's, I have something to say regarding, it has nothing to do with this particularly, but I have to say this, that D Space Nine has some of the snappiest dialogue in all of Star Trek. The way True. people speak to each other is so cool. It makes me angry. <laughs> like, I normally watch Star Trek and I'm like, oh, I love. There's a moment where Picard gives a speech or where Beverly gives a speech or someone says something. I feel like maybe this it occasionally happens in Discovery in smaller groups. But in D Space Nine, the writing is like like film noir, 1950s style writing. Everyone is super like cool and hip, gets everyone's yep. references. The two moments in this episode that really blew me away as I was like, I wonder if they, you know, like seeded in some uh, 
some aspects of the sort of melancholy of the whole episode is when Quark and Vince are playing Go Fish. It's such yes. a random moment. But Quark is like just so depressed because no one's in the bar. No one's having a party. And he, he says something. Uh, I think he says like, this is not my game. And then Vince says, uh, it's hard being left behind, isn't it? You know, mm. and I felt like they seem like they're talking to each other, but they're also sort of speaking past each other a lot. This also had like Julian and Miles are both keeping secrets from each other, sort of. And so they're also kind of speaking past each other. Uh, yeah. As they try to talk. Uh, and then the moment where Garrick's mother, Mila, dies. And then they're saved. And then they're about to go storm the castle. And Garrick is sort of like in his fugue state, kind of staring off into space. And Kira tries to like refocus him with this idea of like, we're going to go now save the rest of your country. And he says like, well, I have a better motivator. It's revenge. And then runs up the stairs and Kira goes, well, that works too. <laughs> it's like such a heavy you're like whoa yeah. other Star Treks would have been like wait a second revenge is no good you know I know but Akira's like yeah it's, none I of them are Starfleet officers but... so this is just true. they're just trying to live they're just trying that to get so the true. Yeah. that is so true that is such a that's a beautiful point and like that doesn't happen in like up to this point in 1999 like you would not have a scene that's all non Starfleet characters. Yeah. Oh yes, exactly. It just, it just wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So like you, you had like a structure in which all of these characters are operating within, right? In every single iteration of Star Trek before Deep Space Nine, there's yeah. always the Prime Directive. There's always like we are we are Starfleet officers, mm-hmm. and this is how we do it. And Deep Space Nine happens, and then all of a sudden, like literally, all those rules are thrown out the window because yeah. now you're like you're especially in this these final scenes you're sitting in a basement with a bunch with three cardassians and one bajoran terrorist mm-hmm. and they're all on the same side right she's and teaching all them killed how to people. be insurgents yeah yes yeah. yes and they've all killed people important to each other yes yeah you know like i mean damar shot zial yeah who was like Basically, like Kira's niece. Yeah. And also, and they're all just still in, and it's just, it's chaos, but it's organized, but it's also very not Starfleet yeah. at all. What about when way. they're laughing while they're holding phase rifles out? Oh my God. Get into the thing. You're like, this is such a strange moment. So great. That's one of my favorite moments, to be yeah. honest. Because number one, Nana Visitor's laugh is so fucking so wonderful great. and infectious. Because like, it doesn't ever feel. To me, it doesn't ever sound forced. I'm always like, she's laughing. She loves. She's like, a great she, time. she's enjoying this a lot. <laughs> but like, that, I mean, every moment that's like that. Like, there's the the moment where Dukat gets the thing stuck in his butt, and <laughs> you know, in er, this is an earlier episode, and the same thing happens where Kira's just like, oh my god, this is so fucking funny, yeah. and Dukat's like, it's not funny, and then it's really funny. It's hilarious. That's I love that. That's like a part of Kira's personality that she lets that. Happen. She's like, I'm surrounded by Cardassians, and this is hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this is all funny. We can't do that. We're trying to do the thing. We, we can't, can't do even the get thing. through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and then two minutes god. later, Damar is dead. Literally dead. Uh, yep. So. Yep. Fuck, Damar. Aww. <laughs> so Kira had a hand in not only liberating Bajor but also liberating Cardassia. And then she takes over in the state. I also like that they hand off finally. D Space Nine, Terak Nor to Kira to run. And she has her little moment with the baseball, which I thought was another. I just couldn't stop welling up with tears at the end of this. Yeah. You know, uh, she like looks around at Ops <laughs> and just Get- tosses the ball in the air. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I know. Because in some ways, some yeah. of those moments are very, like feel like sitcom moments, mm-hmm. like the end of a sitcom. Like you should just freeze and yeah. then they jump and high five and the credits roll. But because yeah. all of the subject matter leading up to these moments has been so intense and like very deep yeah. and serious, mm-hmm. like it hasn't been like, oh, I remember when my son left this ball in this room. Right. This is like, this is like, I'm remembering. Like so much shit and so many people dying and getting murdered around uh-huh, me. Uh-huh. And like these 
important friendships. I remember when I fucking hated this guy. Yeah. And like, I was just, I was so mad at this other colonizing force coming mm-hmm. in. But like now, like there's, there's so many like levels to her just picking up this baseball. Baseball. Remember when we didn't beat that Vulcan team? Remember when we sucked? <laughs> yeah. Quark. <laughs> Well, and it's so nice because that baseball has so much symbolism through the whole show. And it is mm-hmm. a callback to the previous episode where they they do have to leave because the Cardassians have taken over. Exactly. And Dukat says it's a sign like it's a sign he'll be back. Right. And so it kind of it kind oh, of is yeah. a nod to uh, the fact that, oh, that yeah, yeah. you know, Cisco's not really gone gone like he'll be, he'll be back. So it kind of has like a double meaning too. Look at least you. that's how I felt. Mono myth over here. We can hey. tie it together. Look how sharp I am. I forgot she, that. That's right. He leaves the ball, and, and when the Cardassians take the station, and, and yep. Ducat is like, he's he'll be back. That's why he would never leave us. Yep. Wild. Speaking of Ducat, that's oh, let's talk, kind oh of, God. I know, right? Because there's kind of like two, I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Just for our listeners at the end of D Space Nine, we have... Miles and Julian, who are trying to cure Odo and also find Section 31 is involved. Mm -hmm. We have Kira, Garrick, and Damar, who are trying to um, do their little insurrection thing. Um, We have, obviously, like, the main Dominion War. And then we also have Kaiwin and Dukat, who are trying to free the Mm -hmm. Paw Wraiths in the fire caves. And that's, like, a whole nother crazy thread. And I'm not... Not only am I curious to talk about that thread, but just the way that resolved, too, because they're just like at Vix in the holodeck. Yep. And he's like, hey, I got to do something real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's like, I know what I have to do. Well, okay. we can't yeah. talk about it without talking about the fact that they got it on. Which oh, is- oh, of course. And we Lewis have- and I have. Yes, we talked because yeah. we did a whole episode have- just about Ducat. We oh, just oh, talked okay. about Duke. We have a villain series where we we talk about like a specific villain. So we've talked about Ducat. Yes. We haven't talked about Kai Wynn yet. And I'm interested to talk about this just like as a an end cap to the series. We were talking yeah. about it as it relates to Ducat's character. Yeah. And man, this is so fucking satisfying to me. I'm like, you both deserve this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kai Wynn. Ducat at least had moments where he almost seemed like he was going to redeem himself. Like he yeah. almost was going to have a Damar arc, but then his like megalomania and egomania mm-hmm. didn't allow him to like fully uh, come, come forward and understand. And it, eventually they turn into this insane arc where he's like, I'm going to turn myself into a Bajoran. I'm going to sleep with the Kai. I'm going to develop like a, weird fanaticism for the fire caves and so on and so forth uh but kai win has always been like a slightly manipulative like always out for herself kind of antagonistic force since season one i think she once yeah. uh, the other kai uh passes away uh, kai opaka kai opaka everyone's favorite kai well, her Kai first Opaka role, is like she, Obama, and she is. Yeah, Kai Wynn is it's like Donald Trump. As wonderful to say, Kai Opaka feels like it is like it's a relaxing word to utter. It is. And, it has uh, all the same same uh, uh, vowel sounds as Obama. It does kind of. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. switch out the consonants. And yeah. Yep. And Win is like the Trump of yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like this false. But she believes she's right. Yeah. She does believe that she's right. She does believe that her way is the best way and doesn't understand why people don't agree with her. But then she gives herself over to the Pa Wraith because she's it's not about whether or not she believes what she believes. It's whether or not what she believes is the best. So she yeah. changes her belief to something she thinks can get her more, you know supremacy basically yeah i always yeah. i always thought kai wins arc and we've talked about like dakot how ultimately he's he's he wants approval and he wants love from someone and uh-huh. he's not afraid to get it as a narcissist which leads into all these bizarre you know uh things and um but with kai win it's almost like I, she wants to believe and she's convinced herself that she's looking out for others but at the end end of the day she's really just power hungry and right. i think dakot finally 
leads her to realize that about herself, which is kind of an ugly truth. But yeah. yeah. In the moments yeah, and she before wouldn't... her death. Yes, yes. Which is the only time that she would be able to see that is when she, where, where there's nowhere to go. She's backed into a corner. Yeah. That's the only way that she would be able to change her mind. Yeah. Also, I have a problem. She's totally fucked. <laughs> she literally says, I'll stop you. And she picks up the book. Yeah. And it's like, don't don't give him a heads up that you're yeah. going to destroy the book. Anything. Just do it. Do yeah. it while he's distracted. Oh, my God. It's, <laughs> it's never like, good to announce your attack. Yeah, because then, then, yeah. Against a creature that just got superpowers. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Just kind of just kind of like throw it back in the fire pit. And yeah. No. So, yeah. When someone has red eyes. Yeah. Don't tell them that you're coming. <laughs> just. <laughs> just throw that book in the just fire. Just throw the book in the fire. Yeah. Uh, one, okay, so this may be upsetting, but one oh, no. final thought that I did have as I as I was rewatching the end last night is that Cisco and Ducat plummet into the fire caves, and we don't really get a confirmation that Ducat is dead. The yeah. the prophets say he's with the Pa Wraiths. And Cisco is with the prophets. So it feels like they could both be like we now have our, you know, agents of there's like a these demigods, basically, these weird. Yep. Yeah. These the this Ooh, that's uh, a good point. For lack of a better word, your Gandalf and your Saruman uh working. Yeah. It's okay. Creepy. I have thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, because I always kind of assumed he was in fire jail with the paw race. But, <laughs> yeah, sure. But, oh, yeah, all right, fire jail. Here, but here's something to think about. Like, Kaiwen did poison um, Dukat, and then he was possessed. Yes. But once he's not possessed, like once the book is destroyed, he is a dead body. So, you know, that's something to consider. Um, I also do think to some degree the paw race are probably not very nice or merciful so right. they might just be like i don't know where you got that idea from. let's dispose of this body and then you know it's funny with sarah because you know i've accidentally said this in the past too where it's like okay his mom's a um a prophet you know wormhole alien but really it's like a human a biological human that was possessed so right. Right. you know we've had discussions in the past about like how exactly does that influence his his DNA makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a that's an interesting point. If there was like some sort of hint, like the end question mark. And right. Is Ducat yeah. really gone? I just couldn't is get... Is Ducat a, part par wraith I couldn't, now? Uh, I couldn't see myself... I couldn't uh, get my the image of like Ducat clawing his way out of a cave <laughs> of fire in the future. Yeah, someone yes. could like awaken him by accident, you know? And yeah. Then he comes back, and that's maybe part of why Cisco has to stay in emissary Ooh. land. Just be uh, vigilant you know, against him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a great continuation story to put in Star Trek Prodigy. Bum, 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 <laughs> bum, bum, bum. I and I also yeah. <laughs> give yeah. The, give this story of good and evil to the children. Give it to the children. Yes, the children are our future. Mm-hmm. Will someone uh, please think of the children? <laughs> <laughs> Simpson reference. <laughs> Well, I'll I'll just say it. I've, I mentioned this in our Ducat episode, but I kind of found I loved like the the build up to, you know, Ducat fooling Win and then the, them them going to the fire caves and. Yeah. But I found like the very end where the emissary just pushes Ducat like very kind of like that's it. It, it was yeah. a little unsatisfying and uh, some some of the closure. It almost felt like other moments in the series, like when uh, Cisco does free sarah you know that that kind of entity that prophet and she goes and saves the wormhole it almost seems like he had moments in the series that were more more epic or important than the end where it's just like and i pushed a cot um yeah i mentioned in that episode that i was hoping that his ties with the prophet would amount to something a little bit more grander like maybe there was a page in the book that only he could read Mm. that like the bajoran scholars didn't understand I loved that you know idea. but he does or yeah there's something in the fire caves that only like his hand can activate like we've seen some of these ruins and stuff it seemed like there would be something fun that larissa and i discussed could could have like a religious spin on it but still be very scientific in nature which yeah. seems to be the balance of this series 
and it's kind of just like and they fall in the fire pits and then it's just like we're in white space and it it just feels like a little tagged on to the Mm -hmm. very end of the Mm -hmm. series Mm -hmm. i don't know if anybody else feels like that or if it's just me I feel that way. Yeah. It was a sudden. <laughs> I mean, they he just pushes him off a cliff, and you're like, "That's it, Cisco, Cisco dead," you know? Yeah. <laughs> the first well, and like also, and that's all it took was just push him off a cliff. Yeah. Was all it took was for just fall off a cliff. There's not. <laughs> it per- doesn't. It seems like it's supposed to be more complicated than that, right? It's supposed yeah. to be more difficult. <laughs> Perhaps no ordinary mortal could have pushed him off the cliff. Perhaps you needed yes. the grit. Of the emissary. I don't know. That's yes. just a I'm just trying to retcon an explanation here. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> yep. it. No, it was a, abrupt and I felt like it's always hard to end a Star Trek. I do feel like all good things does it super well. But yes. I mean um, was, it's perfect. That's, yeah. It's pretty perfect. That, that was like they stuck the landing ten out of ten. Yeah. Uh, this was pretty close, but they had to finish off four billion plot parts. <laughs> like Cardassia, uh, Guldicott, Damar, Kai Wen, uh, the Changelings, the the you know the Romulans and the Breen want Earth and all this stuff yep. like the the Klingons and yep. Worf Go and wrong. you gotta uh, put Odo in a tuxedo yeah the, the, <laughs> the Daxes and their yeah. you know uh-huh. all that is going on uh, so I do feel like. If they had not tried to wrap all that stuff up, which was very sad, it was like an either or kind of thing. They could have been like, well, some of these characters will just sort of, we could have just showed everyone at the bar after Cisco was gone and had more time with Cisco and something to do with that. Or we take five minutes and do a montage over soft piano music of <laughs> yep. everyone's first time meeting and moments they had during the show, which maybe we didn't need, but. It Wait, really, what is it? Is it the way you look tonight? Is that the song? Yes, that they use? it's the way you look tonight, <laughs> mixed like you know, interpolated with the DS9 theme. Yep, yep, which, yep. Or do we need to hear Vince just, sing the entirety of the way you look tonight? Do we? Do we need it, I, Dennis McCarthy? Yeah, I'm assuming it's Dennis McCarthy. I don't think we did, but I guess they were setting up. They just, you know, it was t- it was TV. It was still the nineties. Yeah, you know. Yep. So they did. They got. It was. It's. It's insane to think that this show ended in 1999. This yeah. show. The yeah. entirety of this show is in the 90s. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's all oh, in the, the 90s. 90s. It did the things that they tried to do. Most of them, I think, they did pretty well. But there are some things that, yeah, they didn't quite know how to clean things up. I would argue. Now I don't want to bring in other science fiction franchises but what's his face we do it all the to time to do uh battlestar galactica yep which i loved 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 but loved. also had final act problems that oh, last yes. season i was like what are you trying to convey here mm-hmm. uh yeah and the final episode they do another uh spirited away person who was not a person who was maybe a person who was there <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel like that was a little bit of a, yeah, spirit who was the person yep. who was not a person who was there kind of thing that uh, I think I I sensed reflections of, of that. I felt less disappointed in the end of Deep Space Nine than I did in that moment for Battlestar, which had fulfilled some I agree. other promises. But then I was like, what? She, wait, she wasn't here the whole time? She was? She an angel? What? Yeah. Because that left you with more questions. Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like at least the end of DS9, you're like, okay, yeah. I mean, if you fall into a fire cave, you're going to die. The fire cave that maybe goes to into a pit of the of endless uh, sh- black hole That's at the not- center of Bajor? Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, where is the fire <laughs> coming from? I mean, like. Where, but where is it coming from? But also, but also like. We we've established this this supernatural slash yes. uh, alien thing with the prophets and the paw wraiths that like mm-hmm. there are elements of these living beings that we don't understand mm-hmm. as humans. Part of me at, at first was like kind of mad about the like space magic stuff yeah. because I tend to be like I'm this is reasons why I enjoy Star Wars. But there's just a lot of space magic in it. Star Wars is space magic. 
It is space magic. Yes. It's all just space magic that you just have to believe in mm-hmm. your heart, mm-hmm. um, which is why it's perfect for Disney. Yeah, it's, it's great, and it's great right? for kids. It's great for kids, yeah. but Star Trek, I remember being like, but why all the space magic? And now I think as a as a more adult person, I appreciate the concept of there are always going to be things that we don't understand Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that there is beauty in mystery and that showing that in science fiction is very science fiction, you know? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Agreed. Like we're, if you're going to create a sci-fi world in which we understand everything, I don't believe it. Right. You know? So I appreciate that stuff now. At the time I was like, no, we need to, yeah. you need to explain yourself, Iris Stephen Bear. Well, I, I do like that they were like, you know what Star Trek really hates dealing with is religion. That's the <laughs> only thing where everyone loses their composure. Everyone's so cool and good about being, oh, we appreciate everyone's, oh, this this is how they mate on this planet. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just how they interact. Right. Yeah, you fight each other to the death and then. And then you get married and you, you know, scream epithets at each other or whatever. <laughs> They're cool with that. But then someone's like, yes. And then we pray. They're like, oh, pray. Yeah. Yeah. You know? They're like, there's so no was... God in space. Yeah. It's just us out here trying to figure, yep. you know. But uh, and and I think Cisco has that reaction to the Bajoran religion the whole time. He's like, stop pinching my ear and telling me about my pa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my car. Uh, but he they really had to contend with the idea of the religion. And then they had to sort of explain enough of it that we could say, like, there's a there's a reason this advanced technological species would s- still have such a devout relationship to their race because of these like group hallucinate hallucinations hallucinations what am i trying to say hallucinate hallucination you got this you got the, you got it hallucination <laughs> and uh hallucinations <laughs> hallucinations and uh and there are you know there's the celestial temple which is actually a wormhole and there are all these explanations but also things that are unexplained so i agree there's this like unknown aspect to it which does allow us to question whether, uh, in my opinion, uh, when Cisco will come back, what his purpose was. Maybe he will be back yesterday. I did think that at the time. I was like, "Ooh, what if Cisco? You we follow Cassidy, and she's like, that was me when you the thing happened. It was Cisco. You know, that yeah. kind of. I don't know what I was thinking, but some kind of weird thing where she was like." That man who saved my life when I, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Her yeah. baby you know, is. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Her baby. Oh, now that would be get weird. True. But I like it. Oh, my God. I kind of. <laughs> Let's I like put a it, pin in that. that would be we'll, uh, we'll you yard. Yeah. Do I love it. He was Jake's father, and now he's Jake's brother. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Jake has to raise his own father. Oh, God. Okay. This I mean, is that's trippy. like, that's like Dune level weird. Yeah. There. But also. Yeah. Time isn't linear. Ah. Time isn't linear. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, to yesterday hasn't. I'm, uh, I'm with you always. Oh, God. Yeah. But it, oh, it is interesting how you, because I have brought up Battlestar Galactica. In fact, that's originally in my 20s when I watched Battlestar Galactica. That's what got me into Deep mm-hmm. Space Nine because I, the guy I was wow. dating at the time said Ronald D. Moore, you know, is doing Battlestar. Yeah. You'd probably like Deep Space Nine because he was involved with that. And I definitely saw shades of what was going on. But. You're right. Battlestar Galactica kind of almost got a little too ethereal. And I think Mm -hmm. that interpretation didn't have a strong, a strong enough foundation. And I I do think these space nine achieved that uh, better. Yeah. They at least didn't have someone fully die and then fully inexplicably come back (laughs) and then never be questioned as to the provenance of their return. (laughs) With all the answers that everyone oh, needed, gosh, yeah. and then just disappear. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> at least they didn't uh, do that. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do that. <laughs> but they did have Cisco and Ducat plummet into a fire cave that maybe falls into the abyss, yep. and then. Yep. We, we do know that Ducat is with the Paw Wraith. Yes. So whether the Paw Wraith are dead, <laughs> and Ducat is dead, or he is now 
clawing his way up to the king of the Pa Wraith or whatever is, uh, you know, something we can speculate. Yeah, that, that kind of seems fiction. more like bad guy trope rather than, yeah, like what the hell yeah. just happened? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is he really gone? <laughs> no. I don't know. But also, like, yeah. I don't think anyone is going to convince Avery Brooks to come back to the franchise ever again. No. So this is definitely, like you said, something that we can only explore in and fan prodigy. fiction. Yeah. Like, we mm. will never, yeah. we, he will never come back as a voice actor. He will never mm. show his face in another star. Like, he has made that very yeah. clear. He's not yeah. coming yeah. back. Cisco is not coming back. Mm. So, But I do still hold out hope. I know. I still I do. I do still hope that he'll wake up some morning and be like, sir. I, I want to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. It's Larissa just popping in to say we had so much fun talking to Aki that we made a double episode, unintentionally. We'll have the next installment of the Emissary episode coming next week. Thanks for listening. Find us in the collective at intothewormhole.show. On Instagram at intothewormhole.podcast. Into the Wormhole is brought to you by We Own This Town. Wow. Right through the door. So she just I she's very <laughs> confident. <laughs> she's confident. Surely you didn't mean to close this door against moi. Moi. Moi.